Hello and you're very welcome back to another episode of Why the Long Face, a podcast with me, Horse O'Keefe. I very nearly forgot the name of my own podcast there. That's not great. Anyway, we'll keep on moving on. Um, so last week I had my parents on the podcast um, to kind of chat about my mental health and stuff. Really, really interesting. I really, really enjoyed it. And as far as I know, they enjoyed it too. Um, but one thing that I actually realised during the podcast was that my mum mentioned um, one of my videos in particular, one of my YouTube videos, um, where I had made a photo book as part of my college course. And the photo book was basically a combination of photography and then written diary entries that I have kind of accumulated over the years. So... The video itself ended up being really powerful because it was me reading out the book and talking about the book and stuff. But I realised that maybe some people haven't seen the video or haven't seen the book or aren't aware of it. So I thought I might talk about that this week. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to read through the book first. I'm going to discuss some of the specific things that are said in the book. And then I'm just going to talk you through kind of the process that I went through making the book. So bit of context this book was made during one of the many lockdowns that we had I was in college at the time and I was already kind of suffering with the mental health because of the whole lockdown and everything else that was going on and what basically happened was we were told that like the second half of the college year was going to be completely self-directed. We could do like whatever we like, whatever we wanted to do. So I made out this plan to do a short movie and I, I deliberately made it quite difficult from like a, a shooting standpoint and an editing standpoint so that I would have enough to do for those few months. It would keep me distracted. And then maybe two months in, they decided that they were going to give us a photo book to do as well. And it completely threw me for a loop. It really affected my mental health. So what I decided to do was basically document my mental health during the lockdown. And then when I was just doing a bit of research and going through stuff, it ended up becoming this a lot like a lot more personal. I came like I kind of came to some realizations almost about my mental health. So that was when I then decided to implement these diary entries that I've had for, like over the years. Like I have three or four different copybooks there that I w- I've been writing in for years and years going back as far as I was 13. Just to, like just a, a quick warning The topics that I'm discussing and the things that I'm saying, they're very deep, they're very sad. If you're possibly in a space or you're not feeling the best, by all means, listen if you want to. But again, I just wanted to 100% make sure you know that this is tough going. So the title of the book is why is it so hard for me to be happy lockdown is tough life is tough I struggle every day to be happy which is funny because I don't know what happiness is I have a vague idea I think I can remember it I do get moments of happiness I get little surreal pockets of time where I'm smiling and laughing and it hits me that I've had a temporary moment of happiness. But what is happiness? Like is anyone truly happy? And if I don't know what it is then why am I so desperate to have it? This isn't because of lockdown. This has been my constant for a long time. Honestly, I don't think I've been consistently happy for any long period of time since I was 10. Since then, there's always been a steady stream of shit to keep me knocked down. The 
That's not dramatics either. That's the truth. It seems that there is always something in my life. To the point that sometimes I don't want to get better because I'm afraid of what the next thing will be. I took my mirror down for filming. I haven't put it back up. When I look at myself, I just feel anger. So it's safer to keep it away. Safer for me and safer for the mirror. I can't even look at pictures of myself, especially pictures of younger me. I can't help but feel that I let him down. He had so much promise. But I ruined it. I feel consumed by anger. Consumed by anger towards this person I've become. Sometimes it all gets too much and I lash out. Which generally doesn't end well. I hate my brain. I wrote that when I was 13 years old. I'm now 25 and I still don't feel any different. Four different counsellors, multiple medications and I still end up in a depressive heap every few months. One of my counsellors once told me that I'm like an ornate, decorative vase. Because I'm pretty but I'm a little bit fragile. And you know what? She wasn't wrong. I always say I hate my brain. It sounds better than saying I hate myself. People take it as a joke when I say I hate my brain. Not so much when I say I hate myself. Why is it so hard for me to be happy? So, obviously that's a lot to kind of process. Um, if you actually have the book or you've seen the book or you've seen the video... You get to see the accompanying, that's not how you say that, the accompanying, why can't I say fucking words? Anyway, you get to see the pictures that go with the words. <laughs> um, and it kind of helps, especially, like, so there's a few bits there. Um, like, you get to see the picture of my door when my mirror isn't on it. And there's just kind of like this ominous stain basically where the mirror was from obviously when they painted it fresh and then put the mirror on and then obviously the door is just like stained with the sun and whatever so I, I think that's a really powerful image of like the mirror not being there when I talk about letting my younger self down there's a, an image of me as a baby or as a young fella in a frame and then the next picture is that frame smashed So the imagery itself is quite heavy. When I say that sometimes it all gets too much and I lash out. Um, so first, there's a, an image. I had a, a cast done of my hand out, made out of clay and I smashed it. And then the two pictures after that are of my hand and my knuckles are busted up and they're bleeding. Because at the time when I was struggling... I I was basically going through this really intense mix of sadness and anger and one night it all just kind of came to a head and I started punching into the ground and I obviously damaged my knuckles and I took pictures to send to my girlfriend at the time um 
and then when I was making the book I thought that they might be a good addition so obviously the book is quite raw and it is quite intense but that was the point I didn't want it to just be another book on depression where it's just I'm sad I'm angry I wanted it to really get into like the nitty gritty of what it's like dealing with a mental health problem for a long time so even if I just go back to the start of the book I think the first part that hits me the most is where I said that I don't think I've been consistently happy for any long period of time since I was 10. So at the start when I said that this book helped me come into a lot of realisations. Before I did this book if you had asked me when did I start experiencing any sort of mental health stuff I would have said in and around 13, 14 but it was through doing this book and going through a lot of diary entries and doing a lot of thinking I realised that it actually did start a lot earlier, it definitely started when I was around 10, 11 when my dad's dad passed away and that just kind of threw me and then it just kind of started from there like when I was about 11 12 I started getting bullied in school and then I moved to secondary school and the bullying continued so I was basically bullied from when I was 11 to when I was 15 which obviously didn't help my mental health and that was when I did most of the the diaries and stuff like that that's like it was during that time period that that other idea of sometimes I don't want to get better because I'm afraid of what the next thing will be and I'm not condoning any of of these thoughts I'm not saying that these thoughts are the way that you should think they're not But I I didn't want to write a book as someone who was feeling better. This book was made when I was depressed, when I was in a really bad place. And that's how you know that it's it's raw, that it's intense, like it's because it's it's what I was feeling. It wasn't me trying to remember. It was me documenting what I was going through. And I suppose apart from the title the hardest hitting part of the book for me is 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 the image that that's in the book of my handwriting from a diary saying I hate my brain knowing that I wrote that when I was 13 and obviously I, I'm fully aware of everything that I've gone through but that's still hurts that still upsets me to see and to know that as a 13 year old that's what was flying around in my head now as as always when I'm doing the podcast I'm also live on TikTok so I have some of my followers kind of asking me questions and stuff and they're actually asking some very good questions so I'm just going to get into some of those Uh, so one of the questions was Why do you feel like you let your younger self down and how? So that goes back to me not being able to look at pictures of myself, especially younger me. So when I was going through the book and when I was going through the writing of the book, another kind of process that I went through was trying to find these pictures of younger me. And it just upset me. And I'm not entirely sure why. I think it was because it was pictures of me. And like I'm talking like 
ages of like two to kind of seven or eight. And obviously I was happy, you know, like as a child, I'm not saying the children can't have depression, but from as as far as I'm aware, I wasn't suffering with my, with my mental health at that stage. You know, it was just me like playing in the yard, being the goofy, silly person that I am. And I have found some of that goofiness and that silliness again but at the time I felt like I'd completely lost that person I think that's why I felt like I'd let him down I felt like that little boy who wanted to grow up and become a Power Ranger or become Batman he was just gone there was no more of that like childlike wonder At the time, I couldn't physically have a positive thought about anything. Like any, anything at all, my brain would just twist it and mangle it until it was dark. That's why I felt like I'd let him down. I felt like all that little boy wanted to do was go around and make people happy and make people laugh. And the person that I was at the time, or the person that I had become, I couldn't do that. And I didn't want to do that. Because I hated myself and I hated the world. Someone also asked, what was your original thought when you thought I hate my brain? And what is your thought on that today? So this is actually something I've thought about quite a lot. I'm not entirely sure what the exact day or the exact moment was when I wrote I Hate My Brain. I know that I was in primary school and I know that it was some one of the bullying incidences. And even though I was only 13, my brain was telling me that that was my fault, that I was wrong, that it was something that I was doing that was making the bullies bully me. Because I wasn't normal. And if I was normal, I wouldn't get bullied. So there has to be something wrong with me. So I know that that was like... That was kind of my thought process. And it genuinely upsets me and kind of annoys me that I can't figure out why specifically I wrote I hate my brain, not I hate myself. Because I feel like writing I hate my brain is a very obscure thing for a 13 year old to write. But I, I did. And I, I wish I could actually remember. And then they also asked, what is your thought on that today? And that's a very strange one. I don't hate my brain as much as I have done. And I can say that I do love my brain at times. But what's weird about it is the reasons why I love my brain and the reasons why I hate my brain are the same thing. It's the same reason. It's because of how fucked up my brain is. And I'm saying fucked up in a very kind of general sense. I didn't treat my mental health the best when I was younger. It, I, wasn't, it, I wasn't until I was like 18, 19 that I finally started talking. So there's a lot. There was like a good nine years there where I was getting these bad habits these bad mental health habits and I'm still trying to kick those because they've basically just become a learnt behaviour so that's why I say that my brain is fucked up but it's also beautiful because 
because of what I've gone through and because of the way that my brain works and my brain processes things. I feel like I've been given this really unique perspective on life or on mental health. I think that's why I do this podcast. That's why I make these videos. That's why I do this photography. I'm trying to share everything that goes on in my brain, both the good and the bad. Somebody also asked, um, because I mentioned the medication, they just simply asked, did the doctor give me the medication? Um, Yes, they did. Um, I think it's very important that if you are struggling, you should go to a doctor. I think there's a, especially among young people, and I, I'm not giving out, I'm genuinely not, I just think that there's, the word depression is thrown around a lot. I think if you do think that you might be depressed, go and talk to a medical professional and get the help that you need. Don't just sit in your room and tell yourself that you're depressed. Because you're only going to spiral, you're only going to make yourself worse. Again, I'm fully aware that this is a lot easier said than done. But I'm only saying it because I didn't do it. I was the person that sat in their room. I didn't talk. I didn't go. Like I said, I was 18, 19 by the time I went to a doctor. The doctor may recommend medication. They may just recommend counselling. They might recommend both. It's just a case of putting yourself first and actually prioritizing yourself and taking that very hard step of going and talking to someone. The books were made. They were We were given the opportunity in college to get five of them printed. I showed them to a couple of people and they like they they really really liked them like they said like they had never seen something that kind of raw or kind of put into words that way and jump forward a couple of months i decided so this was in my third year of college and i decided to not go back for my fourth year for a whole other list of reasons um so i had a couple of Uh, copies of this book and a couple of copies of a previous book and I just decided to be really cheeky to be honest and I threw it up on TikTok that I had these books and I kind of showed a couple of pictures and I was like look if anyone is interested you know I'll, I'll sell them and I got an overwhelming amount of people asking and I only had like two or three copies of each book so I went and I got more printed so I, I've sold a good kind of number of these books and I'm not telling you this to be like, please buy my book. It's not. I still have some available. If people want them, that is perfectly okay. If not, like I said, I've just read out the book to you. So you kind of get the, the idea of what it's about anyway. What I do want to share is, so when I got the reprinted books, Like I said, I made a video of me going through the book and I did a a bit of talking beforehand and a bit of talking afterwards just to explain, one, that it wasn't how I was feeling now, it was how I was feeling at the time. And just encouraging people that it is okay to not be okay and that your mental health is important and it doesn't mean there's something wrong with you if you're experiencing a low period. And that video, when I uploaded it, got shared around loads and I got like loads of lovely feedback. And I had a lot of family members message me. And some of them even apologized for like saying, oh, I, I'm sorry that I wasn't there and that I didn't help her or that I wasn't aware of it. And I'm like, you can't apologize for not being aware because I wasn't telling people. Some male family members that I have told me that And these would be men now in their 40s, in their 50s. And they said that they cried 
watching the video because they have felt how I feel and they have no idea how to talk about it. I know other people who showed it to their kids. I know one family in particular, they showed it to their teenage son. And he watched the video and he kind of went really, really quiet. And then he broke down and he explained that that's exactly how he was feeling. And that young man has gone to counselling now and that's because of me. And I know that sounds like I'm saying I'm fucking amazing. But you know what? That is one thing that I am fucking amazingly proud of. Because of something that I wrote and I put together and I shared my experience about my mental health, someone else has gone on a journey of healing. And I I honestly think that that is just fucking amazing. And again, because of TikTok, because I have this community, two of my books are in England. Two of my books are in America. And the woman that I sent them to in America, she messaged me a couple of months back with a kind of a similar story that so she she runs a cafe and the book is just in the cafe. It's just on display there. Anyone can pick it up and read it. And this 19 year old kid picked it up and read it and she spotted him afterwards and he was crying. And same thing again he just said that it was the first time that he felt like his thoughts were kind of being acknowledged or that he felt like someone else actually understood what he was going through and again that kid has also gone and gone to counseling because of my book now just before i do kind of finish up or whatever i do have another book now it is very difficult for me to show you a photo book on a podcast because obviously it's all me talking but I will describe it for you and if you if you want to well if you want to see the book I have pictures of it on my website like the entire photo shoot is on my website um, and like I said you'll obviously be able to get a better idea there but I, I just want to talk about it anyway so the title of the book it's either amygdala or amygdala I'm not entirely sure but it's basically it's a part of your brain so on the inside cover it's literally just the definition of what the amygdala is it's a roughly almond shaped mass of grey matter inside each cerebral hemisphere involved with the experiencing of emotions so I made this in my second year of college all of my work my photography, my videos, my anything, it's always in and around mental health. And this book was made around kind of the idea of when you're depressed or you're anxious, all you want to do is get the thoughts out of your head. And sometimes you feel like bouncing your head off a wall because you're just so sick of everything that's going on in your head so I kind of had this idea but obviously it was very difficult for me to put imagery to that idea because obviously I can't just take things out of my head so what I did was I bought a teddy bear and I sat him on a couch and I kind of shot him from two or three different angles and then I just I kind of tore just like a little hole in his head and just kind of pulled out a little bit of the stuffing and I shot him from those same three angles again then I went back and I pulled out just a little bit more of the stuffing 
and I went back and I shot him again. And I continued I continued to do this until the bear was empty and all of his fluff or all of his insides were beside him and the bear was just completely deflated. And again, it's it's an extremely powerful piece and I'm very, very proud of it. And like me describing it kind of doesn't do it do it justice. You do kind of have to, I would highly encourage you to take a look at it on my website. Or I can't really finish the podcast without doing some sort of shameless plug. So if any of this has kind of piqued your interest, I do still have books available. Just pop me a message, pop me an email. You can see them. I have a store section on the website. Or if just message me on Instagram or TikTok or message me wherever if you genuinely want one of the books. Because more than anything, I want to share them. And it's 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 not about the money. It it really isn't. I don't want people to kind of getting this idea of I did this whole podcast or I only promote them so that I get a bit of cash in the pocket. It's it's nothing to do with the cash. It's about the message. It's about getting it out there so that more and more people will realize that it's normal, that it's okay that if you're going through these things and that you're not the only person in the world because I know myself and even now I still have myself convinced that I have this form of like mega depression that no one else has and no one else understands and that I'm the first person to go through like this really really intense form of depression that I have now this is this is what I feel when I am depressed when I'm in these kind of depressive states it's not what I think all the time I'm fully aware that depression is not linear that there's no one thing like just because I experience something doesn't mean that you're going to experience it and vice versa But I truly hope that like these books or this message that I'm trying to get out there will get out there. So that as a it's not even as a as a community or as a country or as an anything, as a human race, we can break down these stigmas that we that exist and when people say that they don't exist, it annoys me because they do. When I released the book why is it so hard for me to be happy i had people as as many nice messages as i got i had people messaging me saying you shouldn't be talking about that it's too personal i wouldn't be putting that out there now that's perfectly okay i'm not asking you to put it out there but what i am asking you is that you would stop kind of being so close-minded about it just because you don't understand something doesn't mean it's not real or that it's not truth. You know, have a conversation with me. Have a conversation with anyone about their mental health. Because that's all it needs to be. I don't care if I'm on a night out and I've had a half a pint or I'm at a, a christening or I'm just at my grandmother's house. It doesn't matter. I don't hide anything. I will have the same conversation in each of those settings about my mental health. So lads, for the next week, just just be good to yourselves and try to cut yourself a bit of slack. And again, like most things I say, I know that it's a lot easier said than done. But the main part of that that I want you to take away is to try. Just try. Try and take. And it doesn't even have to be like when people say, I just I was starting to finish off and now I'm going on a tangent again. But 
when people say try to cut yourself a bit of slack it doesn't mean that you have to wake up and start being good to yourself straight away it's like get up and make yourself a coffee you know that's one nice thing that you've done for yourself or get up and just try and go for a walk if you get up and go for a walk if you come home again and you feel like shit and you go back to bed for the day that's okay because you've still made progress you still got up and done one thing for yourself and if you did that one thing today then maybe tomorrow you can do two things or maybe tomorrow you can just do that thing again like I said there's no one cure there's no one linear way of dealing with it it's about figuring out what works for you but you have to try that's all I have to say let's be good and mind yourselves